this hard parking brought to you by Right Honda and Right Toyota out of Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm your host, Jay Finning, recording from my home studio in Gilbert, Arizona. I want to start off by thanking you guys for listening, tuning in. Some of you listen to this on YouTube. Some of you watch the video on YouTube when there's a video to watch. Again, you can listen to the RSS stream on YouTube as pure audio. Some of you listen to this every morning. Some of you listen to it on the other side of the world the following morning. Some of you listen to it every once in a while when you have time. But one thing you've all given me the freedom to do is to be myself on this podcast. Talk about any number of things. This is the society. This is the culture. This is a different form of automotive podcast where sometimes we don't even talk about cars at all. We do have a car news section coming up on today's episode. Sometimes I have in-studio guests. I have guests on Zoom. And we do everything. We've talked about actor strikes. You know, Noah Nelson Jr., writer, producer. Talked about his three grueling months overseas in Burma covering. Went over there to take some notes and ended up getting caught in straight-up conflict, taking gunfire, seeing people die in front of him. Constantly being reminded of people who he used to hang out with for those three months dying. From controversial topics like George Floyd, COVID, student loan forgiveness, talk about all sorts of things. And I appreciate all of you for having feedback. Sometimes you text message me, sometimes you call me, sometimes you slide into my DMs, and I appreciate it. And there's times where I'm going to say stuff that you don't agree with, but you're still here. There's times where I have a guest that says something that you don't agree with, but you're still here. And part of the beauty of humanity, part of the beauty of conversation is having those discussions with people who don't necessarily see things the same way you do, people with different life's experiences. I've had guests on that I don't agree with all the time, but there's always that common point, and that's just basic communication. And, you know, I once had a a car guest on here who... There's a lot of people in the car community who have done business with him who just flat out don't like him. I had one guy sliding in my DMs and tell me that I used to like you, Jay, but since you had this person on your podcast, I feel like you and I can't be friends anymore. It's just shocking. A little weird. I've had other people say, since you've had so-and-so on your podcast, you know, I don't know how you could ever talk to someone of that nature. I don't think I'm going to listen to your podcast. That's fine. I've had people respond to, when I have my good friends, you know, Marcus and John of the RTWJ podcast on, we talked about their lives as part of the LGBTQ plus community. And they're not a couple, but they're best friends. And that was, a, that was one of my favorite episodes that we've done in the last two years on this show. And I've had people comment on that. Not a lot, but we're all so different. And so I appreciate that. But if you ever hear anything on this podcast that you want to respond to, it's an open invite. As long as you can come on this show and have a clean, civil conversation, we can do it. Because this isn't a shock DJ podcast. I'm not going to sit here and say stuff typically that's going to go viral on social media. The most opinionated I may ever get, was it last year? Two years ago now, wow, it was two years ago when the submarine went down and imploded and all those people died. You know, I kind of got on my soapbox for that because on one hand, that's what they get. Fuck around and find out. But on the other hand, man, five people died and that really sucked and it's really not that funny. And people might call me a liberal for doing stuff like that. I'm just a normal person with normal opinions and I like to think that A lot of my opinions I share with a lot of you. Not all, but a lot of them. And this isn't coming on the heels of anybody complaining about anything. But I've had one of my most loyal supporters, one of my patrons, tell me before. He's listened, and sometimes I'll say stuff, and he's like, what the hell, Jay? Like, I can tell he really does not agree with something that I said. But he's still here. This was maybe two or three years ago. but. He is still supporting this show. And that means a lot to me that people can sit back and still tune in, still even pay if you're a Patreon, knowing that there's things I'm going to be talking about that you don't agree with. 
there's things that we cover, especially in the political space, because I have a, I have a video coming up soon. I recorded maybe a week, two weeks ago, but I haven't had time to edit it. And so, you know, I've talked about that. I side with.com, which is a way to identify, help you self identify what your actual beliefs are as it relates to what's going on nationally and what's going on in the world right now. And so when that comes out, that's going to be a video that has nothing to do with cars, but it is me hopefully representing you all in a certain space to where we think we know what we want. We think we know who we like, but you don't really know until you sit down and you answer those questions. I compare it a lot to the personality profiles. We all have to take them or you've either had to take them to get a job or it's always this fun diversity. I know diversity is a, is not a fun word right now, but it's kind of a fun, diverse way to interact with your coworkers. It's always some HR exercise or some fun exercise. You just answer all these questions and you fall in this grid. And so that political quiz is a lot like that. And hopefully I find time to get that taken care of a lot sooner than later, because I think it's important. It's very important. But again, those are some of the things that you'll hear and you'll see because I actually filmed like a video video there were screenshots and all that kind of stuff. So you're going to see all that probably in the next couple of weeks. But if there's anything you guys want to talk about, my office is open. My phone is available and I would love to have those conversations especially right now. Cause one thing that I do is I sit here and I, and I have to check myself on where my brain is going sometimes, because sometimes the more you look into something, the more you find out things you didn't really want to know. And it's crazy. And it challenges your mental health, social media as well. Example, I think I've talked about before that I used to be on Twitter and it just got way too depressing. And so I got off of Twitter. I didn't, I deleted the app, but I didn't delete my profile. And then they changed it to X, but I kept it out there. I logged back on just after the first presidential debate with Trump and Biden, because I just knew the mainstream media isn't going to tell me this stuff. And I know I sound like a kook, but again, the more you dig into things, the more you find out stuff that you didn't really want to know, but also the more your eyes get opened. You know, there was a Chris Rock skit, and uh, it's one of my favorite ones, Who Are You More Afraid Of? And it's part of that part where he says, who's more racist, white people or black people? And he says, black people, because everything white people hate about black people, black people really hate about black people. But he had a little skit in there about the media. He would say, it's the media, it's the media. Everyone says it's the media. It's not the media, it's the N-word. He goes, when I go to get money out the ATM, I'm not looking over my shoulder for Walter Cronkite. I'm looking for the N-word. And it's a funny skit. But fast forward now 20 years later, and you start digging in, and damn, does the media control the narrative. And it is crazy. And that's why I stayed on X. And there's a lot of misinformation on X. There's a lot of misinformation on there. So you have to kind of know what to judge. And if everybody's reporting it, chances are it's probably going to be more true than if only one person reports it. But you still got to do your due diligence. And the crazy thing is you can go to Google and fact check things, but you can't even trust Google anymore because Google came out and said, oops, our bad. We made a mistake on a lot of these weird things. You know, RFK Jr. just... I mean, I don't even remember seeing this covered on the national media, but it's all over X. But, you know, he withdrew from the presidential campaign and endorsed Trump. But one of the things that he said when he was up there talking, one of the reasons, because he's been unsuccessful trying to run his campaign as an independent, because all you hear about is Harris and Trump, Trump and Harris, Vance and Waltz, Waltz and Vance. And you never hear about RFK. He said when he and his team try to post their campaigns and other people try to post their campaigns, they get taken down for being against community 
was it against community standards or whatever that term is. And that's the same strike you see sometimes on YouTube. I think most of us have had those times on Facebook slash meta or Instagram where all of a sudden your post gets taken down. Even TikTok. I posted something on TikTok and it got taken down immediately for being against community standards. That's what it is. Community standards or being false or misinformation. Imagine trying to run a campaign where everything you and your team does, 90% of it gets rejected. And so the American people never see it. And that's the power of the media. And that is real. And so that's why I've been kind of down that lately. Still keeping the cars. And I'm still trying to sit back and look at things like I always do. You guys know I'm a very even keeled person. I'm a very analytical person. I'm not always right. I am wrong sometimes. I'll admit when I'm wrong. But I try to collect as much data as I can and make my judgment. The data and my judgment is going to lead me down one path or the other. But man, you know, there's people out there. Before we get to this word from Four Wheel Online and get to the car news, and you might be one of these people, and I would challenge you if you are one of these people, and you can either stop listening to this podcast or keep listening to it, just like I said in the opening. But I'm going to challenge you if you're one of these people. But there are people out there that still believe on July 13th in Butler, Pennsylvania, when Thomas J. Crooks tried to shoot Donald Trump unsuccessfully and lost his life. There were people that still believe that was fake. Fake. There's so much information out there that's been public. What we don't know is who are the puppet masters. But we do know there was nothing fake about that day. And if you're one of the people who think that, I challenge you to find more information and don't rely on just what they're, not even the, the national media doesn't even talk about it. Now you should question that. That was just over a month ago, people. Coming up after this word from Four Wheel Online, car news. For over a decade, Four Wheel Online has been bringing the best truck accessories and truck parts to enhance the appearance and performance of all trucks and SUVs. They are dedicated to providing an extensive range of upgrades that will match any maker model on the road. The truck products cover everything to give your truck a custom look and added functionality. Need a wheel and tire package? Head over and use the configuration tool. They carry all the major brands of wheels and tires, so go get outfitted today. Visit them online at Four Wheel Online. There's been a lot of buzz lately about the new NSX. Recently, Motor One, just after Monterey Car Week, released a rendering that said, according to the people that they talked to, and I'm looking at this right now because I see it also on Rob Report, but Rob Report referenced Motor One. But Honda is building an NSX-like EV, and they may or may not call it an NSX. They don't know what they're going to call it, but they're working on it. And a lot of the world, automotive world, is shocked, surprised. A lot of my fellow NSX owners look at this drawing and say, wow, based on that, no way. Some people say, take my money. Most people say, that is hideous. I do not want it. But one thing I want to point out is, of course, they're going to make a new NSX. They've been talking about it quietly. We learned in 2021 at an Acura event that I go to once a year. If you guys follow me or listen to me on social media, you'll know what the event is I'm talking about. But we were told by a very high-ranking official at Acura during a presentation, the NSX will return. Like, there will be another NSX. So, for most of us, it's not a surprise. But one thing I want to tell people is by the time the NC1 NSX came out, most of the technology was already old for that platform, which is why the new hybrids, things like the E-Ray, were so much better in every measurable way except for rarity. Of course, the NSX is... Obviously, a much more rare vehicle, and it has its own merits for that. With regard to this newest one that they're working on, this newest vehicle, the NSX was a halo car, so they take the technology of those cars, and then they slowly use them in other vehicles, such as the super handling all-wheel drive. You'll see that on the back of pretty much every Acura, but that's one of the things that the NSX, when it came out in 2017, was heralded for. Wow, look at this super handling all-wheel drive. The three electric motors, including torque steering, torque vectoring, you see that in some super, super high-end cars. 
uh, break by wire, you see that in a couple high-end exotics, the NSX and the C8 Corvette. But one thing I want to do is caution everybody about their excitement for a new NSX because when it comes out, if it comes out, I know they said there will be one, but if they actually get around to it, it probably won't be for a few years. And I could promise you it's going to look nothing like this blue rendering. In fact, I recognize the blue rendering. You know why? Because in September of 2023, Motor One, Motor Authority, one of these companies produced the exact same image. So one thing I learned when I was watching another podcast by an automotive person much more reputable, much more known in the industry than I ever will be, said that it, that Motor One and companies like Motor One have their own artists, that they render things based on some of the cues, the current design language, and some of the things they read online, and it's not a representation of the actual company's artist or rendition. So this blue NSX or blue EV possible NSX that you guys are seeing it's just an artist rendering that has nothing to do with Honda or Acura. Furthermore, if you take a look at it really, you'll notice that it matches the lines of the EV prototypes that Honda unveiled a couple of years ago, where really you just saw the silhouettes of the cars. And I think it was an advertisement about the future of EV and EV is the future of Honda. So pump your brakes. There will be a new NSX at some point, but everything you're seeing online render wise, spec wise is not it. And if Motor One said they talked to somebody or talked to several people that were quoted of saying some things, it's probably true, but that's about it. I'm guessing we won't see a render, we won't see any sort of release for another couple years. Lamborghini has recently announced the Temerario, I think I'm saying that correct, which is the successor of the Huracan, the V10 Huracan, which a lot of people love. I've never driven one. I recently had an offer to drive kind of a special one thing is I get a lot of offers from really good friends of mine to drive their cars and you know I did a couple of videos of my friend Yoshi's uh, Ferraris that he's had I haven't driven his Lamborghini Aventador he says I can I just haven't done it I don't know why I just my wife says I can't drive anybody else's cars anymore because I wrecked one last year last uh, July I backed someone's car into a post I, the post came out of nowhere but back to the Lamborghini so this thing is a 907 horsepower V8 hybrid. So very similar to the NSX with electric motors, the hybrid engine. Of course, the, my NSX is a V6 600 horsepower from the factory. This thing is 907 V8 hybrid from the factory. And I was talking to a good friend of mine, and he's had two or three of these Huracons. And he doesn't keep them very long. He loves the cars, but he also likes cars, so he likes playing around. And he doesn't know... Because it's going to be obviously a, a lot faster and quicker than anything he's ever had at, I think this thing is two and a half seconds, zero to 60 is what they're saying, which is believable because it's a hybrid EV. But I've heard the sound during Monterey Car Week, watching videos online and read the comments. People miss that V10 sound. I mean, that V10 sound is great. And this thing's a V8, hybrid V8. It just does not sound the same. You know, when I listen to my car, I listen to other performance hybrids. They all sound very similar. It's just a certain sound. And you could put whatever exhaust, whatever downpipes you want on them, and they're not going to sound that different from each other. You can hear, you can tell when a hybrid supercar, a hybrid exotic car is nearby when they get on it. They just, they, they sound the same. But nothing sounds like a V10 Ferrari, but a V10 Ferrari. So I'm curious, if you guys have looked that up, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? The Lamborghini Temerario, Temerario. Again, I may be saying it incorrectly. I'm looking at a picture of it right now online. I don't know. It kind of looks like a, if a Huracan and a Gallardo had a baby. And it's funny because they're both descendants of each other. The Huracan is the successor of the Gallardo. And the Gallardo, or Gallardo, I don't know if it's Gallardo or Gallardo. G-A-L-L-A-R-D-O. Shares a spirit and a motor with the Audi R8. No car news section would be complete without talking about Tesla. Tesla's Cybertruck, according to InsightEVs.com, is the best-selling vehicle in the U.S. with a price tag of over $100,000. So for people buying $100,000 plus vehicles, what that is saying is that they are buying the Cybertrucks. Now, I heard, I thought I heard on one of the podcasts that they way overproduced the Cybertrucks, so now they're having a hard time selling them. They're having a hard time moving them. I don't know if that's true, but... Statistically, they are still the best-selling vehicle over $100,000. 
I'm going to read to you what Eric Loveday has to say about it as of August 18th. Again, this is InsideEVs.com. If you live in the U.S., you likely, we love our, let's see, nah, they're not this stupid, 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 let's see. Trucks aren't cheap, blah, 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 according to Kelly, okay. According to Kelly Blue Book, last month, all two all-electric pickup trucks transacted for over $100,000, the Hummer EV pickup and the Tesla Cybertruck, both at $111,000. Additionally, Kelly Blue Book states, so this is according to Kelly Blue Book. So Kelly Blue Book states that the Cybertruck is the best-selling vehicle in the U.S. priced over $100,000. However, we don't have precise sales figures for the Cybertruck. Okay, so that makes more sense to me, given that I just heard that they're having a hard time moving Cybertrucks. And the resale value on Cybertrucks is terrible. Well, here's a link right here. It says the on the same page... More Cybertruck info. The $61,000 Tesla Cybertruck is dead, and here's why. What does that mean? Uh, Oh, here's what it is. The most affordable Tesla Cybertruck is now a whopping $99,990 after the American EV maker removed the previously listed $60,000 rear-wheel drive version from its website and increased prices of the other two versions by $20,000. Compared to 2019, when the electric truck debuted with a bang and an advertised starting price of just $40,000. The most affordable Cybertruck you can get today costs nearly three times more. That said, it looks like the company ramped up production to high enough levels to slash delivery estimates from next year as soon as this month. Depending on the selected trim, moreover, you no longer need to have a reservation to get a Foundation Series model. So... That's right. When this thing was originally announced and everybody did their $100 deposits, this was only supposed to be a forty dollars or $50,000 truck. Remember that? And now they're $100,000, 100, 100 plus thousand. It's not stopping the sales. I see them. There's one that's wrapped matte purple at the mall near me. Very ugly. And I've seen ones that are gloss black, which looks great. And when I travel, I'll see just the silver ones the kind of that that met that matte refrigerator appliance silver out and about what are the weirdest color cyber trucks you guys have seen out there on the road and that concludes our car news hey guys really quick i just wanted to say before i get to the closing i have no idea why it's so muffled but i'm not going to record it again It's good. You should listen to it. The message is there. The stories are there. All right. Thank you. So I got an offer in my email about, I don't know, some publication for BMW and gaming consoles and I think Mario Brothers or something. So let me know if you want to hear about that. It's going to be a couple weeks. I've been playing email tag with the PR company uh, back and forth. And on my hardparkingpodcast at gmail.com. I get emails every once in a while by different PR groups, and they don't necessarily target me, although it makes it seem like they are. Hey, Jay, I enjoyed your last podcast episode with blow so-and-so, so-and-so. Would you be interested in... And what they do is they just skim it, or they just look at the transcript. AI is a mother now. But, I don't know. I was supposed to do it, and then I've just been playing email tags. So let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in. It might be kind of neat just to do that... Get that... Uh, yeah. I don't know. Might be kind of neat. You know, this weekend coming up, I'm going to Minnesota, just like we did last year and the year before, over Labor Day weekend, which is also my anniversary, September 4th. It will be 20 years. 20 years. It's not easy, but it's not hard either. That's why I have a podcast and a thousand different hobbies. So when my wife is focused on one thing, I can focus on another, but we still focus on each other and love each other. Hope I didn't just jinx my marriage. But you know, my, my family is small. I consider myself to have a small family. I have a brother and a mother. I have a few cousins, most of whom I don't know. I think if I were to name, if I, were, I don't think I could name six cousins I don't think I can name four four cousins that I've seen in the last 20 years I can name three especially because I've been going to Minnesota for the last three years but I don't think I can name six 
that I've seen in the last 20 years. I don't think I can name 10. Do you have, could you name 10 relatives? Could you name 10 cousins and uncles? I don't think I could. I have a small family. My wife has a giant family. So that's what we're doing next weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. There is no episode Labor Day. You know, you guys know Wes and I talk all the time and we're both podcasters. And we've decided that typically on holiday weekends, holiday Mondays, episodes are super slow. I may record one for the Patreons before I leave. But again, next week there won't be any. So at least you get one week off from having to listen to this voice. I know it's not easy. Want to thing right Honda, right Toyota, Toyota of Huntington Beach, Claremont Toyota, and Gardenia Honda, foilonline.com, sell shop wireless services, Auto Cannon, officially licensed Honda and Acura gear. Can't forget my Patreon business supporters like Kuya Automotive out of Winter Garden, Florida, Pell Construction out of Caledonia, Michigan, Big House Small Home Design out of Ashburg, Virginia, and Traverse City, Michigan. Shaping success with West Tankersley out of Boise, Idaho, Automotive Specialty Tool out of Owings Mills, Maryland. I keep talking about the Patreon. If you want to join, I haven't had anyone join the Patreon in a long time, but you can for as little as $3 a month. You get access to bonus audio as well as show swag. There's actually specific swag just for Patreon. Shout out to Mark Stoneman, Catherine Cox, Eddie Ramos, Richard Graves, Byron Jones, Bo Jung, Oscar Mina, Jibanko, Yasu Chiba. Email the show at hardparkingpodcast at gmail.com. Follow me on the Hard Parking Violations Facebook group. Join the Hard Parking Violations channel on my Instagram, which is at jfinning. I can't grow without you telling the world how great the show is. Let's do this. Let's grow this thing together. And I'll talk to you all in a couple of weeks. Shut up!